When is a small SUV not a small SUV? Well, it's got a big boot, a big interior, and it's by far the biggest in its class. If you want to meet the small SUV that isn't, well, you're in luck, because I've got one right here. It's the Nissan Qashqai. The Qashqai is a funny name for a funny car. It really doesn't fit amongst the CX-3s and ASXs it battles with in the sales race. It also costs more than those cars, and yet Nissan sells a thousand of them every month in Australia, the same amount Honda sells of its HRV. Nissan is deadly serious though. This particular Qashqai is the one most people buy, the petrol automatic TI. It might cost a bit more than the others, but it's absolutely loaded with stuff. You get these LED headlights, 19 inch alloys, decent sized screen here with the around view camera, you get your sat nav and you also get USB and Bluetooth audio of course, but no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It's a very big interior. I have mentioned this more than once. I'm sitting behind where I sit. I've got plenty of room. I've got an armrest with cup holders. I don't have rear air vents, and that's a problem for two reasons. One, you've got this massive sunroof. So without that cooling air conditioning, if you forget the kids are back there and you've got this open, you can cook them. So we've seen it fits the Cars Guide pram with ease, and it also has a flat floor here, but you can take these sections out. You don't get a hell of a lot of extra space, but you also have the option to lift it, put some valuables in there, and then close it back up again. You don't get a hell of a lot of extra space, but it's a handy little thing to have. The Qashqai isn't over endowed with power, shall we say. From its two litre engine, you get 106 kilowatts and 200 newton metres of torque. It's a good enough engine, or it's a little bit thirsty. Part of that might be the dreaded CVT or continuously variable transmission. I am not a fan of those things. It's got a real rubber band feel and unlike say the Honda HRV, it doesn't pick up as quickly. It doesn't go and find the torque for you and, and get things moving. So it makes the car feel a bit loud and slow, which it probably shouldn't be if the transmission was a bit better tuned. Apart from that, it's a really good car to drive. You've got tons of vision, tons of light in the cabin, uh, the steering's really good, doesn't mind a corner, and even with these huge 19-inch wheels, it rides really, really well. It's got a lot of safety gear. It's got blind spot monitoring, it's got lane keep assist, which I'm just gonna try and demonstrate now as I drift out of the lane. It just tells me it's, tells me I'm drifting across the lane. It also has moving object detection, which is kind of like forward collision warning, where it tells you when things are get pulling out in front of you or, or there's an object in the way. It doesn't have autonomous emergency braking though, which is a bit of a shame because that would really put it right out in front. So as far as cars in its class goes, it's probably the best riding car overall and one of the best handlers. In fact, it rides and handles better than cars from the segment up, like CX-5, cars like that. So it's pretty good. I'm pleasantly surprised. I reckon if you're buying a cash guy, you're getting a pretty good deal. It's bigger than most of its competition, has lots of stuff, and it's got the interior of a big car in the body of a small one. If you need to tow stuff, get the diesel, but I reckon with all that you get with a cash guy, under 40 grand, it's a good deal. And if you want to learn more about this car, click in our full review here.